a uh, couple of disclaimers before we start i will make it full screen because uh, i have to this one this uh, dialogue box first of all um, i was introduced as from kmc mangalore that's my alma mater but i am no longer attached to kmc i moved to another college called kshema and kshema in kannada means uh, all is well so in these difficult times i think that's a very apt uh, description of the place where i work the other one many people mistake mangalore for manipal we are a little away about 60 km away from manipal dr rajgopal shana is a famous surgeon from manipal and we are from mangalore and for many people mangalore is a little off the map to make it easier for you guys we are on the same latitude as chennai chennai is on the east coast we are the west coast and we are in mangalore we are famous for uh, at least two people whom you can easily relate to about uh, Three decades ago, we gave Aisharya Rai, who went on became Miss World, and more recently, K L Rahul, who is doing very well from the Indian cricket team, he is also originally from Mangalore. And uh, to borrow an analogy from cricket, for the past in the afternoon, you heard of laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy from Dubai. Dr. Rajgopal Shanai mesmerized you with uh, uh, left hypochondric masses. and now we'll discuss inguinal hernia uh, my first question why inguinal hernia many people say it's a very simple topic etc etc but that i think is the idea many a time simple topics we think we know not always sure that we actually know uh, most of this talk will be like a class like question and answers and i am expecting many postgraduates to answer as and when the questions are asked please free feel to interrupt me at whatever stage of the presentation if there is something else there will be a feedback at the end of this presentation there will be a link you can give frank feedback because this is um i don't know who you are many of you guys don't know who i am so it's almost like a blinded study in epidemiology please please feel free to give frank comments i will start off with a set of questions and assumptions for the postgraduates of course all of us are familiar with inguinal hernia repair yes or no all of us are familiar with inguinal hernia repair yes or no yes sir right okay right yes all of us have independently done yes. inguinal hernias yes or no yes sir yes sir not yes sir many, not many voices saying yes i presume yes okay um for those of us who have done inguinal hernia repairs we have used mesh and we are very comfortable with what are called pure tissue repairs both one the first yeah. or the second mesh first one the mesh mesh, mesh. Uh, all of us or some of us have seen or done pure tissue repairs yes or no yes yes sir yes yes okay some of us have not is it some of us have not seen pure tissue repairs no, no sir no, no sir. Sir. okay doesn't matter doesn't matter laparoscopic hernia repair is familiar not very familiar unfamiliar familiar familiar very familiar, very familiar sir. how many of us are unfamiliar with laparoscopic hernia repair for the uh, level i am not familiar sir i'm sorry i am not familiar sir you okay fine the <laughs> advantage i don't know i don't have a name so i'm very grateful for these honest answers right the next question is like uh, ercp when you do endoscopies how many of us have done independent lap hernias No. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, welcome to the club. Does not matter. Okay, right. So, with this basic uh, knowledge, we'll go on to this class. We'll start with anatomy, go on to certain specific scenarios, and then see what we can learn over the next forty-five to fifty minutes. Right. Before we go, this question: A twenty-two-year-old male intern presents to you with a right indirect inguinal hernia. What will you do? I can see three names here: Tarshan, Vedvyas, and Santosh. 
Anybody, 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 please answer. Uh, it's uh, hernia rasi, sir. Right inguinal hernia rasi. One. Open. 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 Open hernia plastic. They wanted to do a right inguinal hernia rasi. Uh, I will offer sir that open uh, inguinal yes, hernia otomy and mesh repair, sir. Hernia otomy and mesh repair becomes uh, what we call a hernia plasty. Okay. Anybody else? Any other options, please? Right inguinal hernia plasty. Hernia plasty. means you will include you will use a mesh mesh repair okay uh, anybody is un un um, uh, symptomatic um, expectant management no no he is uh, symptomatic that's why he's come to you he was uh, the junior uh, in college so he's admired your work as a surgery post graduate and he's come to you because he's got immense faith in you symptomatic he says yes. um, and your refi no mesh no sir no mesh okay we'll see we'll keep it at that we'll find out neoplasty yeah we'll 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 see what the evidence for against is a little later in this discussion after we finish go on to anatomy etc etc right this is how the basic anatomy will look like of the inguinal inguinal canal uh you can see my cursor yes sir. yes sir my cursor right this is the yes, external oblique aponeurosis muscle aponeurosis what is important to know is the external oblique aponeurosis continues down as the inguinal ligament. ligament right so you have the anterior wall which is continuous with the floor this is the posterior wall of the inguinal canal made up of the facial transversalis and there is an opening in the posterior wall and that is the deep inguinal ring there is an opening in the anterior wall what is called the superficial ring superficial inguinal ring inguinal ring so we very basic anatomy the anterior and the posterior wall the roof and the floor and two rings the superficial and deep one question at this stage what is the length of inguinal canal in the newborn infant uh, uh, the deep and the, the deep and the uh, superficial uh, superficial uh, uh, overlap uh, overlap sir the deep and the superficial ring the lower lip each other so not yet formed so the inguinal canal is not yet formed it is very important to know that there is hardly any inguinal canal in the newborn infant as the child grows you find because of the differential growth of the muscle because the lower limb is putting traction you find that the inguinal canal is formed to reach the adult side of size of approximately 4 cm So there are two rings I said the superficial ring is in the external oblique aponeurosis the deep ring is in the facial transversalis the posterior wall is formed of the facial transversalis and many of us believe that hernias are caused because of a weakness in the posterior wall of importance when you are repairing hernias this is a very um, uh, I'm very fond of a picture like this because I have to narrate that I had a lady student who at fifth term level showed us how inguinal hernias inguinal canals look like she just rolled a piece of paper and i have never forgotten that i am very happy to say that today she is on her way to become a very reputed endocrine surgeon i'm wishing her all the best because i never forget how she showed us that the anterior wall becomes continuous as with the floor and the anterior wall i repeat is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis the floor is formed of the inguinal ligament this is a pictorial representation this is the external ring or the superficial ring and that is the deep ring these are the nerves which are in the canal there are only two described here ilio inguinal and ilio hypogastric both are root value is what's the root value of ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal l1 sir. l1 l1, l1. l1. And the other nerve that you um encounter you are supposed to encounter during a hernia repair is i've shown you the ilio inguinal and the ilio hypogastric genital branch of genital femur genital branch of the genital femur oh. how many of us routinely look for these three nerves when you do hernia repairs how many of us will routinely search for all three nerves We don't actually, actually, we will only do two only. These two only. You will search for. 
Every hernia repair you do, open I'm talking of. Every open hernia you do, you will search for these two nerves. Yes, sir. Only no, sir. No, not search, sir. Just find. I'm sorry? You not search for... I'm sorry, I can't hear. So you no, won't I... search. If you encounter, then we do something about it. Okay, let me let me put the qu question the other way. Is it necessary that you look at these nerves? No, sir. No. 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 It does not matter. Why so much importance is given to these anatomical structures in the Ingwan Canal? It is necessary to look for them, sir, as the as if we if we uh, take a bite on them or is there any constriction over them, there may be inguinodynia, chronic right. inguinal pain. Yeah, probably partly correct. That was what was told to me when I was a postgraduate. They said if you take a bite, the gentleman very correctly said that that is what he was told probably. If you take a bite of the nerve when you're taking, when you're fixing the mesh, etc., might be one cause for inguinodynia is only partly correct today because the cause for inguinodynia, many people believe, is the desmoplastic reaction that occurs because Gosh. of the mesh itself, right? May not be because of the uh, actual bite that you're taking. But it is important to know that there are three nerves. Many people routinely will not search for, like somebody said, if you find the nerve, try and keep it away from your area of bite, area of the bite or the area of suturing. Uh, we were told there are classically two types of inguinal hernias, the direct and the indirect, depending on, depending on? From origin, uh, from deep ring or superficial ring. Right, so there was a, a something called the deep ring occlusion test. I'm asking you, you think this is obsolete today? You think it doesn't matter to me whether I'm dealing with the direct or an indirect hernia today? Yes, sir. Yes, the management is same irrespective of the type director. Of oh, okay. I'm, I'm glad I'm raising, I'm able to raise a little controversy. Um, we'll put it this way. If your primary aim is to pass the exam, you need to know whether it is direct or indirect. Otherwise, probably from the management point of view, it's probably the same. If that is not uh, the ideal, you must be aware as postgraduate that there's something called the NIHAS classification. And many of us who operate on hernias firmly believe that every postgraduate student needs to know in detail about the NIHAS classification. If you are, I expect you to know. If you don't, this is what it is. NIHAS type 1 is an indirect hernia. The deep ring is normal. The hernial sac is in the inguinal canal, classically called the bubino seal. A NIHAS 2 is again an indirect hernia, but the deep ring is enlarged. However, the posterior wall is intact. Before I go on to NIHAS 3, I want you to contemplate on the question that I asked you. The 22-year-old intern that I spoke about, I said has an indirect inguinal hernia. If the deep ring is normal, and if there is no posterior wall weakness, my question is, do you need to strengthen the posterior wall at all? No, sir. No need to. That's the controversy. The controversy is, in that particular age group, why, how, we'll come to a little later in this talk. But the point I'm trying to make at is, uh, there's no point in saying, I want to put a mesh into every hernia that I operate. So NIHAS 1 and 2, I said, NIHAS 3 is further divided into 3A, 3B, and 3C. The 3A is easy to understand. It's a direct hernia. The posterior wall is deficient, is weak. 3B, there's a, the deep ring is enlarged with an indirect hernia. There is an indirect hernia with a direct component. It's a little different from a pantaloon hernia. There's a little confusion whether an IHS 3B is equivalent to a pantaloon. Is it the same? Is an IHS 3B and a pantaloon same or different? Different, sir. Different. What's the difference? If you say it is different, what's the difference? Sometimes the easy way out, you see, you say it's, it's the same, sir. So I can't ask you what's the difference, you see. But unfortunately, it is different. 
the difference is in the position of the inferior epigastric artery. If the inferior epigastric artery straddles, in that if you have two separate swellings, that's probably a three a three B. If the inferior epigastric artery gets lifted up, with or the entire posterior wall is lifted up, including the inferior epigastric artery, it's usually called a pantaloon. There's a slight difference. A three C is a femoral hernia. There is a four, but I expect or I want every postgraduate to know that there is the nicest classification which is today most accepted and you must base your repairs depending on what the nicest effect is. The nicest four is for recurrent hernias. There is A, B, C and D. Sometimes the direct recurrence is called a medial recurrence. And the indirect is called a lateral recurrence, but that's beyond the scope of this class. So I, to recapitulate, NIHAS is one to four. One is the classic indirect. Two is an indirect with the dilated ring. Three is further divided into A, B, and C. And four, the recurrent hernias into A, B, C, and D. These are some less used classification systems. The EHS stands for the European Hernia Society. They are very fond of giving guidelines. Unfortunately, they've not been updated. They're more famous for the abdominal hernias into M1 to M4 and L1 to L4. But they also have an inguinal hernia classification, L, M, and F. Suffice to know at this stage that it's not usually used. Also, I did forget to mention that the NIHAS classification is classically an on-table classification. What you think is a NIHAS 1 may actually be a 2, though it may not make a difference in your management. Right. Um, that's the problem with the computer uh, animations. What's that? What's the green arrow pointing to? Inguinal ligament. Inguinal ligament. Inguinal What am I trying to say in this picture? Okay, okay. What am I trying to say in this picture? I, obviously, everybody knows what's that inguinal ligament. I think it's the myopectinal orifice. Right. No, somebody else uh, mentioned it on the side. What myopectinal the orifice of Rusha. It's called the myopectinal orifice of Rusha. Again, a commonly asked question. The myopectinal orifice is this area. The entire area along my cursor, right? It shows you that there is a direct hernia, an indirect hernia, and a femoral hernia. The point I'm trying to make at in this picture is the inguinal ligament is not, I repeat, is not a boundary of the MPO. It's only a content. It divides the MPO or the myopectinal orifice into a superior and an inferior halves. Through the superior half of the MPO, you got the inguinal hernias which come out. Through the inferior half, you find the femoral hernias which will, will come out. What are the boundaries to recapture? Superiorly, you have the two muscles, the internal and the transverse is abdominus. The Cooper's ligament is the inferior boundary. It's not the inguinal ligament, it's the Cooper's ligament. And for those of us who have forgotten, the Cooper's ligament is on the superior ramus of the pubis. Medially is the lateral part of the rectus abdominis and laterally is the iliopsoas. And when the MPO was first introduced, there was a very famous uh, statement which came out. I'm very fond of that and says, when you do a hernia repair, you must repair the W-H-O-L-E area and not the H-O-L-E. The argument for a laparoscopic repair is you're repairing the entire MPO Whereas in an open hernia, you're only plugging the inguinal hole. That's the argument for the pros and cons we will discuss a little later in this class. So remember, in a, myopic, sorry, in a laparoscopic hernia repair, you will uh, strengthen the entire MPO of Rouchard. There are these umbilical folds. There are how many normal human beings? Three. Three. Median, medial, and lateral. Five, five, three, medial, three. Three. Medial and lateral. Three. Mm. Five. 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 So, normal human beings are asking, not cyclops, uh, etc. Three. Three. Okay. Three. 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 The gentleman says five. Somebody is. Uh, Both sides. I said normal human beings have um, how many umbilical folds? Four, Lady, three. What are medial, the medial, medial, single, sir. Medial, single. Okay. 
medial and lateral paired medial lateral paired so the lady you must add two more because the, the uh, normal human beings have paired medial and umbilical uh, lateral umbilical ligaments the medial and umbilical ligament corresponds to the uracus which runs from the dome of the bladder till the umbilicus what does it do in the fetus what is the function of the uracus just out of curiosity nothing to do with hernias inguinal hernias i see a very handsome gentleman's photograph here jinesh jayadevan beautiful hairstyle lovely thank you sir what does what does the urac see people who have no hair you see you must uh, appreciate good hairstyle <laughs> what does the uracus do in the fetus it's an extract of waste product from 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 bladder bladder to bladder uh, bladder to umbilicus sir. and then what happens bladder card sir uracus forms a form uh, now uh, common channel in uh, embryological life for both uh, uh, excretory product from uh, uh, kidney as well as uh, gi tract sir uh, okay genito urine whatever okay fine but what does what happens it extends from the dome of the bladder to the umbilicus then what happens where does the waste product go into the umbilicus present i hey try the present okay not relevant for hernias hernias the medial umbilical ligament is paired is obliterated umbilical artery ligament and the lateral one corresponds to inferior epigastric artery can somebody unmute because uh, the my voice is equal so there are five somebody will have to mute the mic do it all then there is echo right there is right, one median and a pair of medial and lateral umbilical ligaments at this stage where do you find indirect inguinal hernia on laparoscopy in relation to the umbilical folds where do you find an indirect inguinal hernia in laparoscopy in relation to these folds lateral to lateral lateral to lateral like lateral through right where do you find the direct inguinal hernia medial to lateral between the medial is it medial between the medial and the lateral or between the median and the medial medial to lateral true in medial and lateral it is between medial the, and lateral it is between the medial and the lateral umbilical folds right if you have something between the median and the medial it's called something else today it's called a pre vesical hernia doesn't matter right this is how the umbilical folds will look like on the inside the anterior abdominal wall on the inside looks like that unfortunately it's this is not taught in anatomy at all this is the umbilicus and then this is the median umbilical fold extending to the dome of the bladder this is the urinary bladder this is the medial umbilical folds on either side corresponding to the obliterated umbilical artery and these are the lateral umbilical folds corresponding to the inferior epigastric artery just out of curiosity the inferior epigastric artery is a branch of is a branch of external external iliac artery true right so this is what i said an indirect and a direct hernias are in between in relation to the umbilical folds look at this picture here a direct hernia this is what i said this is the inferior epigastric artery on either side this is the peritoneum which is exposed which is taken out to show you the inferior epigastric artery corresponds to the lateral umbilical fold so anything lateral to this this is the right side anything lateral to that corresponds to the to a, to the indirect hernia anything medial to that will correspond to a direct hernia but in between the medial and the lateral umbilical folds uh, what is this view called in laparoscopy the pubic symphysis cooper's ligament the lighthouse 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 it's classically called the lighthouse sign for people who are not assisted in laparoscopy this is what you must aim for right it's difficult agreed all the sometimes when i watch uh, people doing tep repairs i wonder whether only i have so much of bleeding or whether they edited videos because to get this view many a time we have struggled but it's classically called the lighthouse sign and what is this star 
What is that area called? There's a star. Uh, space of Ritu. Space of Bogros. Bogros. Bogros space. space. That's the space of Bogros, is it? I see. Regius. Oh no. If it there are there are only two spaces, right? That's the that, that that's the, that's the space of Regius, right? So that is what is called the lighthouse sign. Right, and this, I don't know how uh, uh, well visualized in, in this picture. This is classically called what? There's a large blood vessel here. I'm sorry? That's why I have uh, managed to close that. I put an arrow and say there is a large blood vessel here. Obturator. Not the accessory obturator. The accessory obturator will be somewhere here, superior to the pubic ramus. This is the core the mortis because external iliac cell. Right. This external iliac cell will be somewhere here, my friend. Corona mortis going. This is the classic corona mortis. The corona mortis because the obturator. obturator. If it starts bleeding there, you find it become very difficult to control during a laparoscopic hernia repair. So the classic one is called the lighthouse sign. Beware of the corona mortis. I also showed you about the uh, cave of Retzius. This is the space of Bogros. The space of Bogros is lateral to the, the vessels, lateral to the um, lateral umbilical fold. So you have to, when you do a laparoscopic hernia repair, either a tap or a tap, what it is you find out, you have to dissect the cave of Retzius and dissect the space of Bogros. If you don't dissect the space of Bogros, which is what we used to have trouble initially, you find that the mesh will crumple. And it's a little scary initially when you start doing laparoscopic repairs because you don't know, you uh, anatomy is unfamiliar, first of all. The inferior epigastric artery, instead of being on the roof, is on the floor. And you're trying to dissect in between the inferior epigastric artery and it's bleeding. And then you have to dissect lateral to the inferior epigastric artery into the space of Bogros. I'm telling you it is difficult, but I'm also telling you it is possible. And when you guys pass and become consultants like uh, me, you may be forced to do laparoscopic hernia repair. The pros and the cons we will find out as we go on. At this stage, be aware that there is the space of red seers and the space of Bogros. What's the star on the left side? This is left side, very this one. This is a tap. Triangle of uh, triangle of right. triangle of doom. The triangle doom. of doom. Right. What are the what are the boundaries of the triangle of doom? What are the boundaries of the triangle of doom? It's uh, medially vessels. Vessels. by vessels. Right. This is the left side. Look at this. The T V stands for testicular vessels. The testicular, testicular vessels, the VD so vast difference, vast difference. Vast difference. Vast difference in the male. Right? Apex by the peritoneum. This is where the deep ring, ring is, or the internal ring is, and this is the inferior epigastric vessels forming the lateral umbilical fold. Why is it called the triangle of doom? External iliac vessels. The external iliac vessels. The external iliac vessels, the artery and the vein, are the content of this triangular area. When you're doing a tap repair, you find you won't find the bubble here. You're going outside the interst uh, outside the peritoneum. The the reflected edge of the peritoneum mm -hmm. will form the lower boundary of this triangle. So the triangle of doom. Last usually, I repeat, bounded by the the testicular vessels or the the vast deferens medially and the peritoneum. This is the other another picture on the right side. Again, the same. This is the triangle of doom, and this is the triangle of pain. Lateral to the uh, uh, testicular vessels is the triangle of pain, because you find that the nerves are all in this area. And this is a question asked often, uh, sometimes in theory, many a time in practical. What is the importance of the triangle of doom and more important triangle of pain? What's the importance of the triangle of pain? Sorry, tacker should not be applied. No fixation, no fixation device. The mesh, no fixation device for the mesh lateral to the um, uh, uh, gonadal vessels. So this is again a pixel representation. The D stands for a direct hernia. 
the I stands for the indirect hernia, the areas. F stands for the femoral hernia. This is the triangle of doom and that is the triangle of pain. So this is obviously a right-sided laparoscopic hernia repair. What causes a hernia at the end of all that? Why do you get a hernia? Weakening of uh, abdominal muscle to increase the abdominal pressure. Weakening of abdominal pressure. pressure weakness. Increase pressure. Processes for genitalis. Processes for genitalis. Congenital mainly due to patent process for genitalis. Right. So I've got answers. I've got patent processes for genitalis. Weakening of muscle. Um, stress. Right. Anything else? Collagen disorders. Collagen disorders, excellent. Whatever I wanted, all you guys uh, never knew. Postgraduates know so much. I'm so happy. Right. Preformed sac. Somebody said patent process with analysis. What collagen? Type 3. More or less? Type 3 should be more or less? Less. Type 3. Less. less. Type 1 should be more or less? Type 1 is reduced. Type 3 is increased. Type 1 is the analysis. Less. Type 1 should be more. Type 1 versus type 3. Coffee ratio. Type, so type 1 should be, be more and type 3 should be less. Type 3 should be less. So if you find that they, if you find that people with hernias, if you look at the collagen, some of us have more type 3, making us more prone to develop hernias. Smoking? It will cause weakening of uh, muscles tone. Because you keep on coughing. Uh, no, sir. Uh, pure collagen is coughing. Coughing. The, qu the quality of uh, the quality of collagen. Quality of the collagen also varies in smokers. There is enough evidence. I'm not talking through my hat. I am very fond of talking of what is called level six evidence. Sometimes you know people say there is. It's not evidence based. It is called eminence based surgery. Why do you say so? Because I say so. So I'm not saying so. Right. There is evidence to say that smoking, in addition to causing smoking, uh, sorry, in addition to causing producing coughing, will also intra interfere with the collagen and precipitating factors such as constipation, constipation, chronic cough, constipation, constipation, chronic cough, chronic cough, prostatism, prostatism, or a prostatic obstruction. Right. COPD. Sixty-five year old man with an enlarged prostate comes with a hernia. What happens next? Enlarged prostate comes with a left inguinal hernia. Treat the enlarged prostate. Ultrasound uh, of uh, abdomen with uh, to know the post. To know the post wide residue. Post wide residual. Okay, post wide residual is significant. Two hundred. Uh, oh, oh. oh, we have Treat to the know the. Treat the BPH first. first. Okay. So the volume, so volume of the prostate, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Volume of the prostate. Volume, yeah, volume yeah. of the prostate. I, I volume am not the... really bothered because the post void residual is 220. We will do what surgery to get? Right. <laughs> okay. That's controversial. Okay. Many of us will treat the prostate and then wait for some time and then do the hernia. But uh, I have a friend here who says he wants to do the prostate and the hernia together. I think you're worried. The patient will run away to the next competent surgeon. It's a little controversial. So what causes the hernia? These are the some of the things I put. And uh, uh, many of these, you will find what you guys have already said, preformed sac, type of collagen, precipitating factors. Clinical examination, I put two question marks because I am asking you, deep ring occlusion test, ring invagination test, malgains bulges, 2020, needed, not needed. Deep ring uh, occlusion test is needed. Needed. Because? To know the director, director. You were the guys who said it does not matter to me if it is direct or indirect. Example. In clinical example. From that point of view, guys become smarter. Okay. Have to pass an exam. Yes, I, I myself got into trouble recently in Bangalore. You found that um, uh, there were people who said, I think Rajan sir was also there. I don't know if Rajan sir is listening to this. Malgain's bulges was the point of contention there. Um, I was one who said that Malgain's bulges, it doesn't matter. Yes, lady. The lady said something and then the voice tailed off. 
She stopped okay. talking. There's some problem with your mic. Right. Um, I'll tell you what happened. Malgains, bulges, I said, uh, probably yes, not. As really. we are always do. Exactly. That's the point I was trying to make. But then I didn't find much of support. So it's up to you to decide. In the exam, definitely you'll have to put everything. Except I'm a little uncomfortable with this ring invagination test. It's not very comfortable for the patient. Wherein the classic ring invagination test is a superficial ring invagination. Wherein you get your finger from the scrotum up into the um, superior to the superior ramus of the pubis. It's a little uncomfortable for the patient. So probably best avoid it. But deep ring occlusion test and the malgains bulges, probably you can do till you pass the exams. But I will insist that you do a rectal exam in the male. We said benign prostatic hyperplasia. Ideally, to do a rectal exam when you suspect benign prostatic hyperplasia, when will you do? Uh, Considering age. Diffuria, sir. He is complaining of uh, for, uh, Arcturia. Sorry, sorry. I, I, uh, I, let me rephrase this question. 60 year old man, symptoms of prostatism comes to you. You want to do a rectal exam. Will you ask the person to lie down, examine the abdomen, and put a finger in the rectum? Will you no, do anything no. else? Thank yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can do PR. Yes, I'm sorry. We can do PR. Yes, sir. Let, let me explain further. Does it make a difference if you want, if you do a rectal exam in a full bladder or an empty bladder? So PSA before doing PR. Yes, that yeah. agreed. agreed. But would you do a rectal exam on a full bladder or an empty bladder? It makes no difference. Empty bladder. Empty bladder. It makes what will you do? Ask him to. What will you do? Ideally. Nobody yeah. does. Catheterize, the... empty the bladder, then catheterize the bladder and empty it out. Right. Ideally, ideally, you must catheterize the bladder because you are here dealing with a person who has symptoms of outward obstruction. So ideally, you must put a catheter before you do a rectal exam, but that is, uh, uh, nobody does it. Why is it important? Because if you have a full bladder, you find the base of the bladder gets uh, raised up. The bladder becomes an interperitoneal organ. So the prostate also will uh, falsely be raised up. So you may diagnose an enlargement out of proportion to the actual enlargement of the prostate. So that's the point I want to make. Ideally, on a catheter and empty the bladder, but not that. Abdominal ultrasound, somebody already said a post void residual in the male. You want to look for it. How many of us are happy treating inguinal hernias without investigations? You are same. 22 year old intern comes and says, operate. Chest x ray, etc. Ultrasound needed, not needed. 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 You want to do a chest x ray and an ultrasound? Yeah. Yes, sir. Why your colleague? No, is fit. Absolutely. He makes a paper process. Documentation. Documentation. I suppose that's somebody hit the nail on the head. Documentation probably. For yes. laparoscopy. Detected. Laparoscopy. Sorry. Sorry. For anesthesia purposes. Anesthesia purposes. Okay. I we have anesthesia friends who will say it's okay. It does not matter. But I suppose somebody hit the nail on the head. And said documentation, yes, probably yes. To treat. Anybody for conservative treatment? A trust? No, sir. No, no sir. No, no, sir. No, no, sir. No. Most, most of us will agree and say no. No trust. No trust. Right? So we will operate. The types of operations classically divided into honeotomy, honeography, and honeoplasty. Most of us will land up doing a honeoplasty. My question. What's the place for a honeyotomy in 2020? In children, sir. Only congenital hernias. Congenital hernias. Anything else? Congenital hydrocele. 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 Agreed. Anything else? Female hernia. Direct hernia. Direct hernia, you want to do a honeyotomy. I thought direct hernia, there is always a weakness in the posterior wall. We just now said nihus. Female hernias. Female, Female hernias, you do herniotomy because? Sir, all hernia we have to do. Pediatric age group will go herniotomy. No, no, sorry, sorry. There's a little confusion in this. All hernias we will do herniotomy is true. But then it's not called, you don't stop with the herniotomy. You will either, you strengthen the posterior wall, either a roughy or a plasty. My point yes. is, 
Is there an indication for a pure herniotomy only? Female inguinal hernia. Why is that? Uh, Pediatric hernias. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah pediatric hernias is said. Congenital hernias, congenital hypocele, yes. Is there any other indication? Nihus type 1. Nihus type 1. What will you do? Annulated hernia. A nihus type 1. What will you do? In an obstructed strangulated hernia, you will not put a mesh. Agree. That's the other way. I'm not discussing complications today at all. My specific question. If you have a nihus type 1, what will you do? Herniography. Why would you want to do herniography? Herniotomy. The person who said herniography. In an IHS type 1, why would you do a herniography? Why, how do you define an IHS type 1? There is a sac. The ring is normal. The wall is normal. I'm sorry. Your voice is not carrying through, lady. Some problem with your microphone. Right, I'll tell you because you can't keep uh, stalling here. Congenital hydrocytes, congenital hernias, yes. Young adult males is the controversy. If you look at the guidelines, there is no consensus below the age of 30 what to do. And why is that? Abdominal, okay. muscles will, abdominal muscle strength will be adequate, so it's uh, a controversial whether to put a mesh or not. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. But let me look put, uh, put you the other way. Is there a problem if you put the mesh? No, there's no problem. No yes, problem sir. at all. Sir, the, uh, yes, sir. Sir, the muscles sorry. will get enlarged while growing up. So. Yeah, I mean, 22, 23, many of us have already grown up, at least physically. Mentally, <laughs> we continue to grow. <laughs> is there a problem of putting a mesh in young adult males? Yes, sir. What is it? That's the mesh related complications. Foreign body sensations. Oh, the female does not get it. Pain. The lady was very vehemently said that female inguinal hernias, you do a herniotomy. I'm not talking personal experience. Have you heard, read, heard anybody mention about this? Or there is no controversy. I draw your experience, this one to this paper which says very clearly that there is evidence to say that infertility may be associated with mesh repairs. Open hernias may be more um, prone, the young male may be more prone to develop subfertility or infertility after open hernia repairs compared to laparoscopy. And that's why they suggest a laparoscopic repair, this paper. But we've gone one step further. We're asking if there is a nihus type 1. If you have a young adult male, it may be enough if you do a herniotomy. Because I don't know whether have urology friends here. We've had um, uh, the urologists will routinely come across people who've done or who undergone bilateral inguinal hernia repairs, the young male presenting with infertility because of a complication called IVO. Have you heard what that is? After open hernia, I'm talking of. Have you heard of a complication called IVO after inguinal hernia repair? No, no sir. sir. There's a complication called an inguinal vasal obstruction. It's not mechanically obstructing the, the vast difference. It is, like somebody said, the desmoplastic reaction. And if you do a bilateral mesh repair, one of the chance, one of the complications that you must be aware is subfertility or infertility. So beware, don't put meshes for everybody unless it is absolutely essential. Sir, here the conclusion is the results of our review suggest that open or laparoscopic procedures with mesh hernia agreed. have no significant effects on male infertility. Yes, agreed. They said the laparoscopy is, is probably better for preserving testicular function. There is. Uh, if you look at the guidelines, I, I urge you to read a, a paper called the Hernia Search. It's a large document where it says there is no uh, guidelines to say what to do for young males. Right? Because okay. we're not happy putting meshes. Right? Okay. What, you. You do, what you do in college it is, does not matter at all. If you believe that your person needs a mesh, you put a mesh. 
most of most people will not develop any complication because i am convinced most of us will operate on one side so the man can produce yeah. children because of the vast difference on the other but you must be aware that there is a complication like this okay okay thank you sir right? thank right. you sir okay open laparoscopic are the two methods today's gold standard is a listenstein's tension free hernia repair today's gold standard there's a 2019 paper which says the listenstein is still the gold standard laparoscopy is not i repeat not the gold standard for hernia repair for cholecystectomy what is the gold standard yeah laparoscopic cholecystectomy for epistectomies laparoscopies is controversial in in certain individuals yes right there are certain uh, individuals let's say the diagnosis is not clear females etc lap appendix but in the hernia no confusion listenstein's repair is gold standard all of us have done listenstein's yes sir yes sir right okay yes, sir. maybe our modification listenstein's right there's the classic listenstein is a very specific operation that laparoscopically the tap and the tap the tap for people who are not familiar is the total extraperitoneal repair and the tap is the trans abdominal preperitoneal repair both ultimately the plane is the same in a tap you incise the peritoneum and come into the tap plane what that is i show you this is how a lichtenstein's must ideally look this is the left sided hernia you know the biggest advantage about uh, uh, getting pictures from the net or from books why is it that pictures look so nice because there is no blood sir no in the field there is no blood there is no, blood, no picture bleeds right 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 these are certain things i want you to concentrate on the principles of a lichtenstein that's the external oblique so the mesh is sutured posterior to the external oblique onto the conjoint tendon here the picture shows they've stapled it onto the rectus sheath we'll put sutures the pubic tubercle is here i'll tell you what that is and then we suture to the inguinal ligament right certain principles with this in mind you must use a mesh of adequate size it's usually a little larger than the defect because forward recurrent shrinkage the mesh shrinkage of mesh how much does the mesh, over time? How much does the mesh shrink over time 30% approximately, approximately one third 30%. approximately one third true so you must have adequate overlap you there must be a concept called medial overlap means What's this medial overlap? Recurrence of more. We put mesh two uh, centimeter more me, medial. uh, more, more medial. Yes, medial. More medially. You have to put mesh two cent at least a couple of centimeters medial to the pubic tubercle when you're doing open repair. The same principle with laparoscopy. With laparoscopy, when you're doing bilateral, you'll find that the two meshes are overlapping each other. In an open hernia, also please develop this habit. The the medial end of the mesh will be at least 2 cm medial to the pubic tubercle fish tailing for the cord however vertical horizontal doesn't matter you make space for the cord what is changed last 3 4 years is this it's a little um, difficult to digest but there is evidence to say that you must use delayed absorbable for the upper flap a delayed absorbable suture such as pds pds right gone of those days wherein you used to use proline for the lower flap and the upper flap for people who are not familiar or have forgotten a listenstein repair will include suturing the mesh to the inguinal ligament inferiorly and the conjoint tendon superiorly it is better it is preferable that you use a delayed absorbable like a pds for the upper flap because compared to proline because there must be a reason because the government hospital get pds etc is difficult because you are hoping that even if there is inguinal dynia because of nerve entrapment in the upper flap once the suture get absorbed the inguinal dynia may go away you must realize that the fear of using absorbable sutures in the upper flap is before the desmoplastic reaction happens the mesh gives way it may get a recurrence that's why they said you use delayed absorbable ideally this is the point i'm trying to make at this is the mesh whatever mesh the star is where you must suture the pubic tubercle in open hernia repair don't take bites on the pubic tubercle take a bite by the side of the pubic tubercle if you take a bite off the pubic tubercle you run the risk of developing 
or straight is very extremely painful it's extremely painful so you keep about a couple of centimeters of the mesh suppose this is the left side keep a couple of centimeters of the mesh medial to the pubic tubercle so that you get the concept of the medial overlap what's this the strip of the eoa i put a arrow Hernia repair itself. What's this? Desardas. Desardas. This is the classic Desardas repair. And more and more workshops and conferences, people are talking about the Desardas. I've never done one. Right? But I think there is a lot of Indian connect to this. It's just going through the uh, history. And Mohan Desardas is from Kuna. But it looks good. The operation looks good, definitely. But then it's a pure tissue repair. You strip the external oblique and suture a, suture a strip of the external oblique posterior to these formatic coils. Before you go to laparoscopy, a couple of things. Uh, you're doing a female inguinal hernia open repair. What do you do with the round ligament of the uterus? I want to put a mesh. It, uh, can be removed. Can be removed. I was also told can be removed, but today it's advisable probably not to remove it and you protect it like the spermatic cord. Though nothing hap nothing may happen. I repeat, nothing may happen if you take out the round ligament of the uterus. Right. The laparoscopic hernia repairs the two, the tap or the tap. I discuss about the tap. Tap is similar. There is something called the tap plane. For people who are not familiar, I'll show you a picture. You make an incision by the side of the umbilicus, incise the anterior rectus sheath, retract the rectus muscle from medial to laterally to get into the posterior rectus sheath at or just below the level of the umbilicus. And then you travel in the posterior rectus sheath till the arcuate line, and that is. What's his arcuate line? Lower limb between umbilicus and uh, pubis. What's the significance between midway between the umbilicus and the symphysis pubis? Yes. So, a posterior rectus sheet is deficient. Rectus sheet is not. Rectus sheet after that. So once you go, once you go beneath the sorry inferior to the arcuate line, you get into the extraperitoneal space. There's a, a technical term called parietalization. Stands for means parietalization of what? Okay. I thought guys have said that we've done the scene laparoscopy. Parietal peritoneum. What do you do? Parietalization of the cord. cord Parietalization of the cord. That's right. So you separate the cord structures so that you can see the vast difference turning medially into the pelvis. And then the parietal peritoneum is, is uh, uh, this one dissected inferiorly. So the entire spermatic cord, you can actually see the vast difference. Uh, going away from the um, testicular vessels. That's called parietalization. You must dissect the space of Bogros and the space of Rates. Yes. We've already shown what the Bogros space is. This is how a TEP plane will look like. You incise uh, somewhere here, the third incising just below the umbilicus, retracting the rectus muscle and getting inside, uh, getting posterior to the rectus sheath and the arcuate line. This is how a hernia defect will look like on laparoscopy. This is obviously a what repair? Uh, yeah. tap repair. A TA double P repair because you, your view is inside the peritoneum. Perfect. And uh, probably the last slide before you go on to certain controversies because it's already 626. This is how the mesh will look like. So you must put an adequately sized mesh covering the entire MPO. Most people will end up putting a 15 by 15 mesh. It's difficult to put a 15 by 15 mesh if you don't do adequate dissection of the space of Retzius and the space, especially the space of Bogros, you find that the mesh will start crumpling. Right, couple of questions, guidelines, etc. as we wind down. 55-year-old man presents with writing while hernia, complains of pain, left groin, has a cough impulse on examination. My question, will you explore the opposite side? Laparoscopy, you can see. Laparoscopy? You can see occult hernias. Occult hernias, you can see. Okay, you see an you see a small defect, opposite side. Yes, sir. Explore the opposite side. I'm sorry. The gentleman says he wants to do a laparoscopy. He didn't say tap or tap. TAP, bilateral TAP. Tap, tap. You want to do a tap? Okay. Suppose you do a tap. No. To tap. Bilateral. There is an in between. I can't hear. Only in tap, in tap, we have to dissect to see. It's very difficult to see occult hernias in tap. Very difficult to see. 
I see. We have not done proper dissection. What, what is the difficulty? Just dissect it a little more on the opposite side. You'll find the hernia. It's better it's to not symptomatic than no need to see uh, as opposite side. No need to see. Not symptomatic. No, it's a cough impulse. Otherwise, you'll go to your competitor who will say you, the gentleman didn't do a proper job. Give the patient the option. Sides. What is the evidence about exploring the opposite side? Give the patient the option. I see. What will you tell them? There's a I'm, chance of developing hernia, uh, uh, full-fledged hernia on the, on the other side. If required, we can uh, do bilateral at the same sitting. At the end of all that, I, I urge you to look at certain guidelines. What is important is this prior informed consent. So like somebody said, if you're doing a tap repair, if you have prior informed consent, is very important. No point in saying, look here, I, I wanted to do the right side and then I wanted to save money and then I did the left side. If it gets a complication, you'll come next to Corona, you, your photo will come. Saying that the surgeon operated because he wanted to make extra money. Right? No consent, no surgery. Right? What is recommended is a tap. If you're doing a tap and you have consent, you can explore the opposite side and repair. Otherwise, no. Open hernias, no. This is the recommendation as far as the hernia surge is concerned. Otherwise, it depends on you and your patient. Recurrent hernias. Causes can be divided into pre, intra and post-op. I'm not going into details. I'm asking a question. This is the evidence. As of today, after open hernia repairs, endoscopic repairs are better because the complications are less. What happens if you have a recurrence after an endoscopic hernia repair? Open. Or after a tap and a tap, you don't get recurrences. Go for open repair. Go for open repair. So if you do an open repair and the person recurs, mm -hmm. you go for endoscopy. Mm -hmm. If you do an endoscopy yes. and... I'm sorry? If you do, I've, I've done an open repair, I'm an open man. I do an open repair and the hernia recurs. She can't, the patient comes to you, you do a laparoscopy. So you, you do a laparoscopy and the hernia recurs. Patient comes to me. What will I do? I pump. This principle. I pump. Okay. No, no guidelines. No guidelines. In fact, there's a very funny incident which says after laparoscopy, if it recurs, do open. If after la open, if it recurs, do laparoscopy. If it recurs after both. <laughs> if it recurs after both. Refer the patient. Refer the patient. Excellent. <laughs> I wanted to say send the patient to Dr. Pata Radhakrishna, sir. I'm extremely grateful to sir for giving me this okay. opportunity. Right? As we conclude, I have just one more um, request from you guys. There is a feedback link. It's, it must have come. I've asked uh, Radhakrishna, sir. Good, uh... A wonderful lecture, uh, Rajesh. I wish you continue for half an hour more. <laughs> One hour is enough, sir. <laughs> so the just about you click the chat box. Just about the chat box is a thing called file. You click that file and in which you find the feedback uh, feedback form and you just uh, click the uh, the uh, appropriate uh, uh, option, right? All yeah. The, my point is this, sir. I I am not sure uh, people are so extrovert enough to put it on chat box. Many of them may have some comments to pass which they don't want to make it public. So why, why not give them the link? Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good idea. But I don't know after the, uh, we need to how to extract that. You should tell me. But anyway, if some of you want to write on chat, these days everybody writes on chat. You, whatever okay. you feel like, you should because you know. Where do you have, click on that, sir? I, am, yeah. I have no idea. You just click the chat. Okay. Chat box above the chat box. There's a column called uh, uh, file. File. Uh, in the in the chat box, right lower corner, there are the three dots will be there. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. So that's uh, it's, it's, uh, no, not that one. I not that. Know. Okay. On the chat box, uh, one. I'm trying to figure out. One minute, sir. If you go back, uh, the, go to the uppermost part of the chat. Yes. There's a feedback form. One minute. Yeah. I think it's the other uh, screen. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Let me see. Uh, Zoom group chat. Yeah, because my problem is the in the Mac, there's a, I know. <laughs> everything, sir. 
just a minute i hope uh, the uh, uh, participants can get that if you go into the group chat and uh, uh, roll the thing to the beginning the very first thing you'll see the lgs feedback form okay sir okay right it's there it's there i believe okay i have another uh, computer here you just you can double click it yes i am requesting there are uh, quite a few of us here i am requesting you please give frank uh, frank feedback so uh, i have a question please please do uh, so uh, why are uh, patients uh, who have undergone open uh, uh, appendicectomies prone for hernias um so i wish some other colleague of yours answers this question his question is why people who undergone appendicectomy is open appendicectomy is prone for right side or left side i mean the same side sir right same side yes can somebody answer this for me please there's always a predilection for uh, neuro neuropraxia or uh, any nerve uh, of the ilioinguinal nerve which can ilioinguinal nerve because because the answer for I mean, ilioinguinal nerve—it's not accepted anymore. So that's why I was asking this question. Ilioinguinal nerve is not accepted, is it? Yeah, that uh, that answer is not accepted anymore. Why? Because that was the answer I was told also. I have yeah, answered. No, the they're saying it's more of a thoraco-abdominal nerves which are injured, which might uh, predispose to hernias. I have no idea. I think sir, what are other questions sir can answer? I, I have actually, frankly, I have no idea. Okay, no, I don't know because I have read what was uh, he says is not accepted, so I have no idea. Hello, uh, sir. I have another question, sir. Please, please. Uh, uh, sir, I am listening to you from Sri Lanka. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. My question is, sir, that what are the factors we need to consider whether one patient is we uh, whether the patient is go for a open or laparoscopy? Right. A uh, very frank answer depends on what you are comfortable with. right if you ask me everything else being equal would would i as a surgeon prefer open or laparoscopy i prefer open because i have seen the bad things that happen with laparoscopy right but that is a very personal opinion because if you are comfortable i have seen people do tap repairs bilateral tap repairs in 25 minutes an excellent job so depends on your training i was trained in the era of open surgery and then moved into laparoscopy so i'm still uncomfortable doing taps if the patient insists i will do a tap saying that look here my friend these are the complications which you don't see with open surgery right so it is probably at the moment a very personal decision but so there are... is there's a question on the facebook group there are about 100 people watching there so uh Sai Bharat Shankara asks, "Sir, throw some knowledge in dealing with inguinal dynia in post-op hernia repair." Right. Yeah. Um, any of these chronic pain syndromes, there is a actually a pain uh, chart, wherein you start off with the uh, least harmful, so to say. You start with the NSAIDs, go on to opioids. If the medical management does not work, then only think of intervention, and in the intervention, you start off with tens. if tens does not work you have to explore and what is described is a triple neurectomy fully understanding telling the patient before you do a triple neurectomy that it's a procedure which may not succeed one even if it succeeds the pain may go away and you might get anesthesia slash paresthesia so sometimes the treatment may be worse than the disease what is the cause for inguinal dynia as of today is not uh, what is understood is not that the mechanically take the bite or the nerve gets entrapped it is more of the uh, desmoplastic reaction which uh, which is needed because of the mesh to prevent the hernia from coming that is the cause for the pain i can't see the chat box so if there is anything please let me know anybody Yeah, uh, could you be any one of you could see that form feedback form? No, sir. No, is it? No, Just we didn't me. find it in the chat box. No, sir. No, sir. But sir, class was excellent feedback. <laughs> no, the feedback form is not there. I believe, sir. Can you? Um, I'll look again. Look. My this one is not moving. Also, 
my cursor is not moving also it will be helpful if the link is copied and pasted separately uh, how do you want me to do that my friend so copy and paste it on the so chat box sir copy the link and paste it in the chat copy box yeah, yeah okay okay we'll do something we'll do something i have a copy and paste it in facebook sir i i i'll say yes on yeah one just a minute just a minute give me a minute just give me a minute Let put it in lgs sir you want me to copy it and put it okay i'll put it in lgs and for it see if it come on to yeah i thought it it's come give me give me one minute let me see whether we can do something no the feedback form is last not that ah okay yes okay. give us a minute if it's successful we'll tell you because i was asked a lot of questions in that as to please rate me on a scale of 1 to 10 please rate me if actually <laughs> classes must continue if the classes must continue give me topics etc because if the answer is no then we can all you know um, sit back and relax in this difficult times uh it's come i believe can you just have a look whether it's come on the chat box no sir not yet yes sir we got it yeah got uh, it. yes sir but okay we got it sir somebody has got it okay please uh, take the effort and uh, you know the uh, usual this one is uh, about 30% of people will take the effort i am hoping that a few more will please make the effort if there are no other questions can we stop sir just a minute i have added that also in the uh, learning general surgery as a file right sir just feedback please come there and answer as well fine sir okay sir. Uh, the name and the email is optional so you can put uh, rithik roshan um sir khan sai fali khan or whatever doesn't matter the name is don't put your actual name you see then you don't be truthful so thank you very much sir right thank you thank you very much i hope i hope some of us have learned something about inguinal hernias yes yeah, sir yes, definitely uh, lecture thank indeed dr Rajesh. i must thank uh, patta radhakrishna sir again for the effort that you did thank process yeah balal well, well, Yes. for introducing you and uh, to a new world of uh, learning and uh, we shall see you quite often dr rajesh kind of you sir thank you very much thank you so much i shall thanks, end sir. the thing thanks everyone